you've got some big names, too. Uh, Goldman's on board, uh, TPG, Mark Benioff. Uh, I think our viewers are probably familiar with your marketing at least a little bit. Just why? Why, why now? Is this, a, uh, is this about a writing a technology tailwind, or is it something about sort of the moment we're in as a society? I think it's a, it's a bit of both. You know, we've had a tremendous year at Calm. Um, obviously, the, the, the sort of wider world has had a you know, pretty terrible year, and anxiety and stress are on, on the rise. And so we've been able to support uh, you know, millions of people with the tools that, that we offer. And, you know, we're always getting hit up by investors. And, um, you know, normally we wouldn't potentially be raising right now, but we thought this would be, you know, worth, uh, worth putting some more money on the balance sheet, um, even though we've been profitable for many years. And bring on some other great investors. You know, we're really excited to have Goldman Sachs, and we're very excited to have Mark Benioff, um, who can, you know, hopefully uh, help advise us on our growing B two B business. And um, yeah, so it was kind of an opportunistic thing, really. I've got two questions on um, sort of costs. One is uh, customer acquisition. Is it any different? given sort of the unique uh, content business that you're in, and then content creation. I, I just wonder, relative to other types of content, how expensive that is to produce. Yeah, cu customer acquisition costs, you know, is, um, it, is pretty favorable for us, partly because, you know, we have great organic tailwinds. You know, people are having life-changing experiences using the Karma, whether it's, you know, getting better sleep or reducing anxiety. And so they tend to tell a lot of friends about it. And then we've got really effective paid marketing online. Uh, we have a world-class media buying team. Uh, and then led on top of that, you know, we do great partners with some of the you know, best talent in the world. We you know, have a partnership with LeBron James. We've got talent in the app, you know, Matthew McConaughey, Harry Styles. So all of these things together create a, a really, you know, really great uh, marketing sort of momentum. And, um, you know, the economics of the business are great. You know, to the point about content, you know, it's actually – a very favorable business model in the sense that audio content, which is at the heart of Khan, is, is very cost effective to create, um, unlike, you know, creating video, which is very expensive. And, um, you know, we're basically seeing sort of very, very high margins and, uh, and as a result, able to sort of spend, you know, very healthily and very profitably on, on marketing. And Alex, once your valuation gets into the billions, I start to wonder, are you just a great app or are you a platform? So which are you? Are you perhaps going to get into referrals to mental health services, professionals like a Mint or Credit Karma for wellness? Yeah, you know, we, we see ourselves as, as much more than an app. Um, that's where we started, you know, and this is where we have the sort of relationship with all of our millions of customers but we're really excited about the future and growing calm and becoming, you know, as you say, something of a platform. You know, we've just started this year really heavily selling into uh, corporations. You know, we have hundreds of companies, very large and very small, who are now buying calm for their employee bases. And that's a really fast growing part of our business. But we've always imagined calm being uh, more than an app. We want to create a lifestyle brand, one of the most meaningful and valuable brands in the 21st century. And the reason we think we can do that is because mental health you know, issues are so, so important. This year, 2020 has shown that um, we really need to take care of our minds and, uh, you know, Khan is there to support. So we, we see a bright future ahead. Um, and yeah, valuations in the billions obviously create uh, new expectations, but, um, you know, everybody in the world has a mind. So the so, market is, is big. So tell us how you think about data and your policies around it, because not only is your data personal and health related, it also has to do with how people feel. So to what degree will you keep that? Are you protecting that? And are you outlining what you will and won't do with it? Absolutely. So we have a really robust uh, privacy policy and, you know, as we've started doing, you know, big, big deals with corporations who have very, very, very high standards in terms of data protection, you know, beyond the sort of standards for consumers, uh, you know, we're, we're taking that very seriously. So we have, you know, incredibly high security, uh, incredibly high compliance um, and, and getting better all the time. So we take this data very, very seriously and, and you know, we're doing all we can to protect it. Um, so, yeah, it's a very good point. Finally, uh, just in terms of international uh, distribution, where where does the U.S. fit? Are, are you the num are we the number one market? Uh, and I guess who's number two and three? What does that say about sort of <laughs> the the mental state of the of the global economy right now? Yeah, the U.S. is is firmly number one in terms of uh, you know paying members and downloads and things. Um, but we do have a big big audience outside of the U.S. So the U.K. is our number two, um, and then followed by Canada. 
uh, and Australia, but we have in sort of the last couple of years started internationalizing properly. We, we're now in seven different languages. We just launched in Japanese this year. So we've been in the US the longest, but um, we're excited to see you know, how the business can grow internationally too. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.